You might not realize, but we owe everything on this planet to the sun. The toasty climate, the photosynthesizing plants, and even the vitamin D in our bodies. But what would happen to us if we left the sun altogether? What if the Earth left the sun's orbit and traveled straight into the empty darkness of interstellar space? For such an event to happen, we would need some kind of external force interfering with the neat orbits of our planets in our solar system. Think of a second star passing close by and catapulting us away, or maybe a rogue planet. There are several possibilities, but let's not dwell on those, and instead assume that the Earth just stops orbiting the Sun and starts moving straight ahead at its orbital velocity. The Earth is uniquely well situated when it comes to distance between us and the Sun. It's not too hot nor too cold. Astronomers call it the Goldilocks Zone or the Habitable Zone. And on this journey, we will also find out very quickly how small this zone really is. At this moment, the Earth is 150 kilometers away from the Sun, a unit that is called 1 AU. At its current velocity, the Earth would travel about 6.5 AU a year, rapidly moving away from our home orbit. This means that we would go past Mars in about a month, and past Pluto in about 4.5 years. The chance that we collide with any of the planets is minimal due to the sheer size of their orbit, but we might get bombarded quite nastily when passing the asteroid belt between the second and third month. Apart from this, the effects of this departure would be noticeable almost immediately. By the time we pass Mars, our toasty planet would have been so far already that the average global temperature would go down about 15 degrees. One month later, around the same distance from the Sun as Jupiter, and the temperature will fall even further to a wintry zero degrees. In addition, nearly all plant life will be dead by now, due to either starvation or hypothermia, causing a mass extinction all across the planet and stopping the renewal of our oxygen. While catastrophical, these conditions are still manageable for the well-prepared. Things get worse though, as the temperature will keep falling lower and lower, reaching an estimated negative 75 after one year. At this point, all water, including the oceans, is covered by several meters of ice. Interestingly enough, this is good for some sea life as the ice will insulate the water below and help to keep it liquid for the billions of years as long as the Earth's core remains liquid. Thermophilic life that sits around thermal vents on the bottom of the ocean would probably not even notice the difference. Any surviving humans at this point would be doing the same, either living off the heat provided by thermal vents like in Yellowstone Park, living deep underground where the Earth provides heat, or using the dwindling supplies of fuel to keep them warm. Nuclear energy would be very helpful at this point, as the material lasts for a very long time when compared to other fuels. Roughly a decade after our departure at about 30 AU, or 4.5 billion kilometers from the Sun, any surviving humans on the surface of the planet will start noticing a strange, milky substance fogging over the Earth's surface, much like condensed water can do now during winter. This liquid is more worrying, though, as it is liquefied air. We're very used to air being a gas, but at around negative 200 degrees, it will liquefy. In fact, the entire atmosphere will slowly start to condense down into a liquid, and the air will grow thinner and thinner. Eventually, it will be impossible to breathe on the surface. The liquid air brings more problems, though, as it is extremely flammable. NASA even has another word for it, rocket fuel. So not only will it be hard to breathe due to there being less and less gaseous air, but an extremely flammable liquid will start pouring into the remaining underground bunkers and start exploding when coming into contact with open flame. At this point, the only place where life is possible is underground. As the surface is negative 200, there is no air to breathe, and on top of that, it gets bathed in a large amount of radiation that would otherwise be absorbed by our atmosphere. We think that it is safe to say that this is the point where nothing can survive on the surface for an extended amount of time. Fortunately, that's where it kind of stops getting worse. Due to the warm core of the Earth, our oceans under the initial ice cap will remain liquid, 
and when moving a few kilometers further into the Earth's surface, it can even get up to comfortable temperatures. Humans would be able to survive here. They would be able to use the geothermal energy of the core to produce electricity and light, and also could be used to grow plants underground. Alternatives would be moss, fungi, and algae, which are much easier to farm and grow in large numbers. This could also be a small victory for the vegans, as keeping animals would be very difficult, forcing us all to live off of plant matter. Air would never run out, as liquid air, or by then perhaps solid, can be harvested from the surface. Also, machines can be used to recycle what is present down below. Water would have to be collected in a similar way before all of this happened or extracted as ice from above. The Earth's core will remain hot for billions of years after the Earth's departure, slowly giving off its heat to the surrounding material and surface. This means that the underground caves and oceans trapped under thick layers of ice will remain at the same temperature, regardless of how far we venture from our home star. All in all, it's not unthinkable that some humans would survive and form underground communities. Given that they are large enough to ensure genetic diversity, such communities could live, thrive, and grow for millions of years. And in the wild, we can only expect life to survive and thrive in the eternal darkness of our deep oceans, unaffected and untouched. How would you react to such a situation? Tell us your survival plan in the comments below.